The technique that we'll show here on a left shoulder using the 1.8 millimeter why not is a subpectoralis or arthroscopic low uh, bicepital groove biceps tenodesis so that we eliminate some of the rotator interval pain and eliminate the bicepital groove pain. Off of the lateral edge of the acromion, I've marked the anterior lateral edge of the acromion uh, which is useful for identifying the bicepital groove in a very reliable fashion uh, arthroscopically. Um, and that's also uh, an axis that one can use for finding the bicepal groove distally. So the biceps will take a track right off of the anterior lateral acromial edge. And then just a standard anterior portal. Corcoid uh, is medial. Corcoacromial ligament comes across here. The acromioclavicular joint is here. So if you had to do any AC joint uh, work uh, at a later point in the case, uh, I like to put my portal right in line with the acromioclavicular joint, but we'll also use that. And then our standard visualizing portal, which can be used in the subacromial space or the uh, joint, is about two centimeters down. So we can see the glenoid step off. We're just going in a standard fashion into the glenohumeral joint. So visualizing from the posterior portal to anterior. So here we see the subscapularis, the middle glenohumeral uh, ligament, uh, humeral head, glenoid. There's an anterior inferior labral tear here. Um, and as we look superiorly, the long head of the biceps brachii comes in to its attachment on the superglenoid tubercle and superior glenoid labrum. And then the superior glenohumeral ligament is visualized right there at the top of the subscapularis. And in the assessment of the biceps, we want to look at uh, both the superior labrum and the attachment, and there's a variability. And then as we look up, uh, you can actually see up through the floor of the uh, bicepital groove, which would be the transverse humeral ligament. Um, will be visualized up in this area. And the importance of that is that in superior border subscapularis tears, the long head of the biceps will subluxate medially as, as this uh, structure where the arrow is is, is uh, torn, the biceps, uh, superior glenohumeral ligament, and subscapularis will all migrate um, inferiorly and medially. Um, and in those cases, uh, simply doing a biceps tenotomy would not be sufficient um, because you would have uh, distal retraction of the biceps and a, and a resultant Popeye deformity. In this case, I'm doing a limited incision anteriorly to look for any slap lesion or instability of the biceps anchor. And then equally important, we want to, uh, you want to pull the biceps into the joint to make sure that it doesn't subluxate as we pull it medially. So the next uh, portal that we'll establish is the anterior superior lateral portal. So it's right off the anterior lateral edge of the acromion. And again, that's the place to find the bicepital groove. And the utility of this is that it localizes the bicepital groove for us. So this step here helps uh, open the interval so that when we go in the subacromial space, um, we can uh, easily locate the biceps. And then what I'll use is a, uh, a straight meniscal knife, a standard beaver blade. But simply what I'm doing is I'm, I'm opening a hole in the rotator interval so that when I go in the subacromial space, the biceps is, is clearly identifiable. I don't want to release the biceps yet. One important aspect of the tenodesis is actually setting the biceps tension appropriately, uh, and it's most appropriate now. I'll try and leave it attached until the actual time that I decide where to fix it. And now I'm going up towards the transverse humeral ligament right over the bicepital groove in the humerus. So just to get some perspective, basically I've opened the rotator interval uh, between the supraspinatus, which is here. So the anterior cable of the supraspinatus is over here. Superior glenohumeral ligament is here. Subscapularis, long head of the biceps. And I'm just opening the interval in a linear fashion right between uh, the subscapularis, superior glenohumeral ligament, and the supraspinatus tendon. I'm going to switch and look from the subacromial space. And then as I come in the subacromial space, I'm going to find the ligament and sweep fairly laterally so that I'm way out in the lateral recess. So here's the ligament. And then I'm just sweeping laterally. You should see uh, a little bit of a clear lateral recess. Here's the corcoacromial ligament, which has some fraying in this patient. And we're inside the actual bursa. Here's our opening for the uh, biceps. So here's our interval area where we open the bicepital groove. And you can see how you, it, you just can't find that area uh, looking from a pure subacromial space. So that's the opening. And eventually I'll switch and look from this area 
so that we'll be right over the biceps. Before doing that, we'll do a little bit of a bursectomy as we would in, in most cases. And I'll make this a little bit in line with our, uh, our bicepital groove. And again, we're pretty much in line with what we drew out initially right off the anterior lateral edge of the acromion. I think it's important here in any of the subacromial work to keep the deltoid fascia, which is pretty nice in this patient, intact so that you don't extravasate. In a case where we were doing any rotator cuff work or anything, I would, I would certainly do a complete bursectomy. There again is the biceps. And again, if you don't take the time to just find it intraarticularly, which uh, it's, it's impossible to find up here because all of this looks uh, the same as the rotator cuff. Here's the deltoid fascia. So again, we want to try and leave that intact because we stay in the fascial planes using the rotator cuff here as the uh, fascia, and that's at the bottom of the screen. And at the top of the screen is the deltoid. And again, we're well lateral to the edge of the acromion. So if we look back, here's the coracoacromial ligament. This is supraspinatus, the anterior cable that's coming in here from medial to lateral. And then again, we've opened up the bicepital groove so that we can see the biceps. And I will now switch and look directly down on the biceps. Before I do that, I want to place a cannula. So now I'm going to switch from the standard posterior lateral portal, uh, and I'm going to look from the anterior superior lateral portal. So again, we're looking uh, from anterior superior lateral. Uh, you can actually see into the joint because we've opened it. There's, there's the uh, biceps and its attachment to the tubercle. What I'm doing is I'm using the biceps to guide my dissection. So here's the biceps under me. Now you can see the transverse humeral ligament fairly clearly. Uh, you'll stay out of trouble and um, you're very safe if you just stay right above the biceps here. So now we're getting uh, right into the transverse humeral ligament. And there you get a nice picture of the bicepital groove coming around. So you can actually see the uh, medial border of the groove when you have a subscap tear that involves the superior glenohumeral ligament. You'll actually get tearing of the transverse humeral ligament, which we've just started to release. And this will pull medially and the biceps will subsequently subluxate medially. This would be the time where I would actually tag the biceps uh, and pick a spot to do the tenodesis and do my release, but, but not really before this point, because otherwise I would be concerned that I'd be guessing as to where to place it. And by leaving it attached, I actually know how to tension it um, because it's anatomically positioned exactly uh, where it should be to be appropriately tensioned. So, so the, uh, the body's already kind of done the, the measurement for me. And there you can really see the groove pretty well. And you can see that we've, we've clearly uh, released the entirety of the transverse humeral ligament. So any groove pain that may be resultant from some of the other techniques would, would be eliminated uh, by us doing that. I've just simply doubled over a suture, placing this through the cannula. Simply I'm passing this around the biceps or under it in this case. So now I'm around the biceps and I'm simply through the loop with the grasper. And now I'm going to feed the suture ends through the loop with the grasper. And we just have a simple luggage tag configuration. And that's a very simple kind of grasping stitch that we've now placed around the biceps. So the spot that I want to tenodice this is going to be the distal part of the groove. I'll just place it right at the base of the groove down here mm -hmm. to eliminate groove pain. And that's going to put us about here, uh, which is, uh, you can't see on the anterior side, but it's, it's right close to the subpectoralis position. My preference at this point would be to just go ahead and do our, our drill hole. So we just have a, a standard uh, guide pen, and I'm just going to place this through the cannula at the distal aspect of the groove. In this case, I'm going to drill it through the first cortex, to the second cortex, and embed it partially in the cortex uh, because I don't need it to be bicortical at this stage. And so oscillate helps. Uh, so I've got our guide wire, and I'm introducing the reamer and then we've got our biceps and suture pulled off anteriorly. And if you oscillate, you're much less likely to wrap up any soft tissue as you start this. And then all we need to do is drill unicortically in this case. This is the uh, drill guide for the 1.8 millimeter uh, y knot. So I'm just holding that in place at the far cortex in the humerus. So we're gonna drill this just unicortically through the far cortex. Okay. And then we'll place our anchor. So now we're setting our anchor against the far cortex, and you can see it's, you know, I'm pulling the whole arm here. Um, basically, we have, we have far cortical fixation. 
and we have our suture mark here for where we want the tendon to be. And it's at this point um, that we'll release the biceps. And here you can see the biceps is easily coming out because we have ample length. It's already out of the wound without me doing any retracting or anything. So this is all the biceps that's extra. So here we have a, a free needle with a large eyelet so that we can pass our suture through. Here's the uh, luggage tag kind of stay suture that we placed. I'm going to pass this in two different ways. With one of the strands, I'm just going to do a horizontal mattress configuration coming up through the substance of the biceps. So and that will still slide through the anchor so that it can be tied. With one limb from the other, you can do a, a running locked whip stitch. So I'm going to lock this through the loop. So I'm one, uh, one end of this is free, the other is locked in, so you can see it pulls on the biceps. And we know the length we want for the biceps, so I'm just going to release that. And that's how much we're excising in this case. So as I, as I pull on this, our biceps comes into the tunnel, and there it goes. So now we're getting our transosseous fixation, uh, and you can see distally, there's the biceps, and approximately it's being tensioned in by the locked uh, whip stitch by me pulling on the, the free end of that suture. Okay, And you can see that the biceps is well tensioned again because we measured, uh, but also we're introducing it into the socket, so we're going to get a good bony fixation of that. And now we've got four strands of suture to secure that. We have two sliding constructs, so you're not of choice can be done. So here's our tenodesis in a bony socket. There's no suture that's prominent. It's at the very distal aspect of the groove. So this is an arthroscopic equivalent to the subpec uh, tenodesis technique using the 1.8 millimeter Y-knot anchor. And you can see that it's well tensioned and there's no, no chance of a Popeye deformity in even a thin patient like this.